Good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone who's joining us here today. Um, my name is Marie Norden, and I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. Yona, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Yona, and uh, I'm part of the Fedora Diversity and Inclusion team. And Vipul? Hello, I'm Vipul, the faceless person in this talk. Uh, I work at Red Hat in community platform engineering team, They're doing infrastructure bits for Fedora and CentOS. But today I'm here as diversity and inclusion advisor to Fedora Council. Awesome. All right, so we are here today to talk about Fedora Week of Diversity, which was held at the beginning of October 2021. So first I am going to start off with a little bit of history so um, our, our long-standing event has been Fedora Women's Day, and we had a diversity team meetup at the beginning of this year, in March 2021, where we had a long discussion about moving that to a Fedora Week of Diversity. Now, um, this was something as a team that we wanted to move forward and kind of have some growth in. So that's why we made that change. So from there, um, I kind of picked up the project management role for, for um, the week. And we started out with a call for interest on the diversity inclusion team mailing lists and IRC channels to see um, who was going to be interested in jumping onto this initiative with us. So for this year's planning and um, work on the, the FWD, we had Yona Vipal, Ashlyn, myself, Grayson, and Honor Elf. Um, that was the, the little working group that we had, and everyone kind of contributed different things. Um, but I will have to specifically call out the video eff editing efforts by Honor Elf, who was just on screen with us a few moments ago. That was a monumental effort um, to do that. So um, we decided um, as a working group to really focus on existing processes or things that we had done in the past. Um, so we also wanted to keep a well-defined and reasonable scope. Most of us are volunteering or for myself, I'm not volunteering, but I'm project managing a lot. So we all have a lot of other responsibilities. So we wanted to come up with something we could actually complete and make happen. And then we also, all at that time, we're really feeling a lot of virtual fatigue. So we really didn't want to create something that was gonna add to that. Um, so those, these were the kinds of things we were um, focusing on. So I think next, Yona will take it away and talk a little bit about what we did. Yeah, uh, so as uh, Marie were mentioning, um, like we had a brainstorming um, regarding some ideas, what we could do for Federal Week of Diversity. Um, and of course that we had like many ideas, many things that we wanted to do. Uh, but uh, instead uh, we said, you know, we need to choose a few of them um, and uh, let's say prioritize the main ideas that uh, we thought to bring for this year. Uh, so which one we focus? So first of all was the, the video series of Fedora Stories. So uh, basically we wanted to bring some um, Fedora related stories from different people that, uh, and we started this at uh, Nest this year. Uh, so basically we had a session that people could jump in and they could share um, their Fedora stories. So like how they became part of Fedora. Uh, who were some of the people that uh, helped them or mentored them uh, in the community? What were some uh, moments that they um, remember and they um, they like from the community and so on? Uh, so this was the, the first part. And also like we continued it also uh, later, Marie did some uh, other videos that uh, we published. Uh, then the second was uh, we started to have a resources page uh, on our um, Fedora DNI uh, uh, doc page. So, um, and about that, uh, people will also tell you a bit later, like uh, what does it mean, uh, how uh, it's help, uh, helpful for others and so on. 
Uh, next, what we did is also we published the videos from Federal Women's Day that happened uh, last year. Uh, so we uh, published all the um, uh, videos we had uh, on our YouTube channel so people could, uh, could watch it. Uh, another one was the Federal Social Hour. Uh, so basically this time was like uh, themed uh, with the Federal Week of Diversity um and like could, that people could just jump in and uh chat with us uh next i believe you saw on the previous slide um the also the the brand or the logo that we have for the federal week of diversity uh so this was like another part that we focused um and we have also a badge uh that you can see on this slide so uh, in case like you were part of uh, the Federal Week of Diversity, so you shared your Federal story and you don't have the badge, um, just let us know. You can write to Vipul and he will award the badge to you. Uh, and of course, the, the last but not least is the promotion part. Uh, so we uh, focus this time more on Twitter. Uh, so uh, we, um, let's say, uh, wrote some tweets regarding all these goals that we were mentioning now uh, and uh, during the week of federal week of uh, the federal week of diversity we um, shared all the videos or all the materials uh, we had uh, prepared so this is it for the goals and then marie sure so this is a, a just a brief overview of the engagement we had for the Fedora Week of Diversity um, as of November 1st when Nona and I put this together. So hopefully there's a bit more on there. Um, we weren't really sure what we what to expect with the engagement here. So it was a bit hard to do any like benchmark as far as is this successful, is this not? Um, I would say overall, um, the feedback that we received was positive, but I think Sadly, we also received some negative, like we got a lot of down votes on our videos. So I think that there's, um, we're addressing a problem that, or addressing a topic that's still a problem. And um, we got some tweets that were not like the nicest. So I think there's some, um, some work to be done in our overall ecosystem still here um, and accepting these kinds of things. But the interesting thing was that, I mean, these really, were, this really was a, genuine um what's the right word genuine kind of effort to just to, to really elevate the stories of the real people in our community so we weren't trying to fake anything or do something that was um, disingenuous we were really trying to be authentic to our fedora community so we hope people can um kind of actually just see that instead of just the word diversity um so we had as I mentioned, as Jonah mentioned, we had two different YouTube video playlists, um, and we also did a lot of work on Twitter. And we also had, I think, a couple of blog posts. And I actually pulled up, um, I think, <laughs> too many tabs. I tried to pull up, yes, um, these playlists so that um, folks could enjoy that here as well. So we had, here's this one, this. So we had 22 Fedora stories. As Zona mentioned, we got like, I think 15 or 16 during Nest. And then I did um, some other interviews. And then we had 16 videos from Fedora Women's Day um, 2020. All right. So I'm going to talk about this one a little bit too. So what is the Fedora Week of Diversity mean for Fedora Women's Day? Because that was something we have done for a couple of years. People really enjoyed it. And we actually had quite a bit of success with it. So Fedora Week of Diversity doesn't mean that Fedora Women's Day is going away. This simply means that um, this is what the current team of folks wanted to put their energy into um, based on the circumstances we're in as far as our virtual world and our virtual world we're living in now and um, kind of the stuff we've learned as a community and as 
uh, society together about you know bringing in even more folks um, beyond just women. So that is that's kind of why we we moved, but that doesn't mean that we can't do Fedora Women's Day. So when we move back to being able to do in-person events, we hope to be able to support local organizers in creating Fedora Women's Days. So we'd like to do that still around the same time of year, and even better, we'll be able to promote it during most likely a you know global virtual Fedora Week of Diversity. So basically, we want to um, encourage local folks to kind of continue that on. So um, all of the processes and how to get resources for that are, are up on our docs. So that's something that we can definitely do in the future. And this is not, not going away. So just wanted to review that because we've had that question. All right, next I'm gonna hand it over to Vipul. Thank you. So uh, re I recommended resources space uh, months before the Federal Week of Diversity. Marie, Yun and I were already in a call brainstorming ideas for things that we can do during the week and how can we do it more reach and highlight some of the efforts by different folks around the world. And one of the ideas we liked was a resource space. It, it's not exactly for highlighting the work that's being done, but also more about how can we expand. So that I, I have got a lot of personal messages, how can they learn more and what's the reason we are doing things. And we already had something similar. We asked folks to take a course and incentivize with a BAS, where the course was uh, still is active, by the way, Inclusive Open Source Community Orientation by Linux Foundation. If you take that course, provide us with a certificate, we would award you a BAS. And when I took that course, I learned a lot from that. And when we, dis when we were discussing these ideas to do things, a resource space was one of the things we thought would be amazing and a lot of folks would learn from that. And so the initial resource space had things mostly from the finding that I started looking into more resources, more articles, courses, after the uh, inclusive open source community orientation uh, course. The goal of this resource space is to have a place where people who are interested in learning more about why our efforts are important or how can they learn more and try to understand what we do uh, and exactly why we do that. So if you are interested in learning more about diversity, if you're interested in learning more about some things and not just listen to Whipple, not don't just listen to Marie, don't listen to Yona, but there are a lot of people who have done a lot of studies and uh, experiences from different sorts of life. You go and you take the course, you understand things, you read different articles and why it adds values. So the resource space should have courses, articles, studies, and it's supposed to be a continuous, continuously evolving thing. Uh, if you have something to add, would definitely be amazing things to add it there. There are a bunch of other places as well that I found while exploring different areas, but they were quite vast. And I wanted it to be, it's coming from my experience and I was looking for different resources and that's where the resource space things born of. And I was looking for something concise and we that's why we focused on content that we found someone we know or ourselves actually read and found useful so if you have something that you read or you went through it and you thought this was an amazing thing that you learned it would be an amazing thing to add to the resource space and obviously contributions are always welcome there uh, that's the resource space. i'll add the link to the chat there so if you are interested in checking what we have there for now i just dropped it Oh, thank you, Marie. It's one less you got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, on, on the resource space, yeah, in the resource space, you'll find short courses that will take around 30 to 120 minutes. Or then there are also some very extensive things, uh, more than four hours. And these are the things that someone from DEI team, DNI team has actually taken it and understands that this is a good resources. And uh, I'm actually very much interested in finding more studies. So if you come across them, it will be great things to add there. Awesome. Um, I just want to point out a book that I put on that page, which is called The Culture Map. And I just read it like a month or so ago. And it taught me so much. And it's not, um, it's not theoretical. It's very practical. Like it's, it's like, this is how you can actually look at why cultures have evolved and do things in certain ways. And it looks at I think eight different, you know, different things and how, like what the, 
what that spectrum is. So for example, like communicating people who are low, con like cultures that are low context versus high context and giving you a history of why that's the case or like how people view time. You know, some people are very rigid with their time, whereas other people are very wishy-washy, right? So we've all experienced, you know, different things, um, working with a global community, different ways that people work. And this honestly gave me aha moments about, I don't know, maybe four or five of my coworkers. And I'm like, I now understand why this person likes to explain things a certain way or um, why they ask questions in a specific way. So just wanted to point that one out in particular that it's a super awesome read and I would recommend it to anyone working with global community. And I agree to it. And I, I don't think it's even just restricted to community. It's especially useful if you have in your own company and team of people from different it is, it's very helpful. Yeah, it works for business, you know, work, co you know, if, for your coworkers or whoever. It works in a lot of places. It's a really good one. Um, so, what's the plan for 2022? This is something that we want to come up with again as a team. And we are looking for more folks to get involved. Um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have a certain amount of resources and um, we did an amazing job with what we had. I am so, so proud of the team, and um, but I'd love to see more, right? Like I'd love to maybe provide some trainings or um, have some more virtual events or maybe have some guest speakers come and talk. But um, all of that takes organization and time and resources. So um, we need more folks to join us and, you know, come with your ideas if you have things that you want to do or you think that we should be doing. Um, we'd be super happy to, to have more people involved. So now let's go and see if we can take some questions. And I see we have a couple in the Q&A tab. So I'll start with the first one here. Um, Ricard asks, I thought about another thing on neurodiversity. Not all neurodiverse people are great drivers, which means that an accommodation for a neurodiverse person can be not requiring a driver's license. Um, I don't have one and even with accommodative accommodations, driving is very compl complicated for me. So I hope that the virtual format has helped with that regard. I'm not sure exactly if it's a question or you're providing some commentary, but I think that um, the pandemic has had like a little bit of a silver lining um, we've seen such a tremendous amount of engagement with our online events. And I really hope that some of those attendees are folks that were underrepresented historically at our in-person events because of some of the reasons that you're mentioning here. Um, okay, so the next question is, um, it might be slightly off topic, but is Fedora Appreciation Week still a thing? Didn't see much about it this year um, other than I have it in my calendar. So Fedora Appreciation Week didn't happen this year. Um, that was something I think that Justin was heading up at one point. And just like a lot of things in our community that is um, driven by a person who has a passion for it, um, we actually looked at including aspects of Fedora Appreciation Week into this, and we sort of did, right? So part of Fedora Appreciation Week was the contributor stories. And we took that idea, contributor stories, and we evolved it to video stories. So previously those were blog posts, and this time we just wanted to, to make that into a video format. So we didn't pull off the Fedora Week, um, Fedora Appreciation Week as its own standalone thing, but we actually borrowed some stuff from it. Uh, also, uh, uh, something along the same line, we tried to revive a happiness, Fedora happiness packet, but unfortunately it was not finished by time to have deployed in working versions. So that was, that idea was dropped. So we are also looking right. for more, more tests and ops person. Yes, definitely. Um, getting happiness packets up again for Fedora would be awesome. Um, and we did have a couple different people looking at that. But once again, it was a resource thing. So hopefully we can get that up and going for next. 
Are there any other questions for us today? Um, someone's asking how to claim the Fedora Week of Diversity badge. So to claim that badge, um, you had to have participated in the Fedora Week of Diversity, but there will be um, one next year that you can be involved with. So, you know, keep your eye on places like the community blog, um, the diversity and inclusion mailing list, um, the diversity and inclusion channel or chat. So if you keep an eye in those places, you'll see when we're working on it and you will have a chance to earn that badge again next year. I hope that helps. Let me see if there's anything else going on in here. Oh, is there still an echo going on for folks? I can hear you clearly. Okay. Oh, I saw just a couple chat uh, messages here in the chat. <clears throat> awesome. Someone says they're interested in the book recommendation. I'm really glad to hear that. Well, if we don't have any more questions, thank you everyone for your time. Um, we'd love to have you involved. If you know you, you can't contribute to you know, organizing, just to participate, tell one of your stories next year, um, come by our social hour, whatever that might be. So really appreciate your time and have a great day at the release party. Yes. And again, happy Fedora 35 release party. Have a good time. Woohoo! Party. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.